TMZ Live, Harvey Levin here. Charles here. So um, we can now tell you something that I said yesterday I was very confident of. Yeah. There was no deathbed confession From by O.J. Simpson. Simpson. Right. We know that because we have talked to somebody with direct knowledge. Charles, the way it was I'm... put is shocking. Right. Uh, as we told you that there were uh, dozens of people who came to see O.J. in his final week. Um, and there were a lot of conversations, but everyone had to sign NDAs, and there uh, were no phones allowed in there. But we've spoken to people um, who were, who, like we say, have direct knowledge. Um, there were conversations that OJ had with lots of people. Give him the quote. But, Come on, you got to give him the quote. What this source said uh, that there was no deathbed confession that was laughable. They said, unless being thirsty and asking for water is a confession, or wanting to watch the golf tournament. Nothing about the L.A. thing came up or was even thought about. Nothing about the L.A. thing. Yeah. The double murder yes. for which he stood trial. Right. And then um, was found not guilty and then subsequently was ordered to pay $33 million in a civil case. Right. The L.A. thing. The L.A. thing. That is pretty Did not amazing. come up. And as it's not shocking that it didn't come up. It is shocking to hear it referred to that way. It is. Um, and, and, you know, we talked about this yesterday, but I am convinced that O.J. Simpson has rearranged things in, in his, his mind head. long ago that in his head, he never did it, even though he did do it. He and never... Know, by the way, he wrote a book <laughs> called... If uh, I Did If I Did Well, he did it, but he changed the scenario in his brain, and I believe that O.J. Simpson for many decades believed he did not commit those murders. Yeah. He had a different scenario. There is somebody that I have always wanted to talk to about this, and I'm just going to confess right now. Howard Weitzman was um, O.J. Simpson's first lawyer. Um, as soon as the as soon as he was arrested. Well, no. Well, um, it was his lawyer before that? When O.J. when O.J. actually when he was arrested, he was no longer his lawyer. Um, O.J. that that is Howard Weitzman. When O.J. Simpson came back from Chicago, O.J. Simpson was uh, uh, Howard Weitzman was at O.J.'s house on Rockingham to meet him there, and was his lawyer for only two days before he withdrew. One of the reasons he withdrew is that his wife, who is a fierce person, and I have known them for many decades, and I love both of them. His wife, Margaret, said, uh, if you keep this, if you continue on with this case, I'm going to divorce you. And, um, and Margaret- smart choice. <laughs> and, and, and Howard withdrew. Margaret knows a lot, and I have known Margaret over the years um, very well, and we really haven't talked about it, more out of respect, just because Howard was alive at the time, and sadly he passed. Um, but now I want to talk to Margaret. All right. Well, joining us now, uh, Margaret Weitzman, welcome to TMZ Live. Hey, Margaret. Hey. Hi. Hi, Harvey. Hey, Margaret. I got so many things to ask you, but I got to start with the one that... I have always wondered about, and I know Howard confided in you a lot, and there is something that happened that I need to know, and I, I, I can't rest until I know this. The, on June 13th, 1994, when O.J. Simpson came back from Chicago um, the, night the, the morning after the murders, um, O.J. Simpson, that is him, O.J. Simpson met your husband. In fact, I know you were there, um, and... You then see uh, Robert, Robert Kardashian leaving. walk out with, and you see this garment bag that Robert is walking out with, and the police let him go. That is the garment bag that O.J. Simpson took to Chicago and then brought back. Margaret, what was in that garment bag? Nothing but his clothes, because O.J. Simpson dropped and took care of the weapon either at the airport or um, I think he had his friends help him. But there's there's nothing of note in the bag. Did Howard ever tell you that? Um, Howard did not ever tell me that, but we both feel that um, there's, there's nothing in that bag. I mean, he just, uh, but his clothes. Um, what I can tell you is there was clothes in the washing machine before he left. I don't understand. Why would Robert Kardashian just take dirty clothes away from Rockingham. Why would he pick up O.J.'s garment bag that he because took to Chicago? it was Chicago? at the airport. It was at the airport. It was taken to the airport. I don't... 
He well, why, but why? But he was leaving. Yeah, he was leaving, leaving the house. The house why would he with have the left OJ's back? clothes Actually, at Rockingham? I, I don't believe it's odd, but I have a feeling that either Van Hatter or somebody told him to take it. It's as simple as that. I mean, I'm sure Robert did not. There's just no reason for him not to. All he wanted to do was drop it off. I, I don't even know why OJ didn't have it. I have okay, no answer. Okay, I, I want to get into the police station for a second because. Howard, your husband, accompan yeah. accompanied O.J. Simpson to Parker Center, which is LAPD headquarters. That is Howard and O.J. leaving. The thing That's is, her. the thing is, Margaret. I know what you're going to ask me. Okay, well, let me do it just for people who don't know. <laughs> okay. Howard, Howard Weitzman was an incredible lawyer, incredibly competent. He got John DeLorean off when, when there was video, video of John DeLorean, of John DeLorean making a cocaine deal. And he got uh -huh. him off. Howard was right. a remarkable lawyer. Howard, yeah. Howard let OJ go into the police station to be interviewed alone. And Howard went to lunch. Are you ready? Are you ready? Why? I'll was tell you why. I'll tell you why. That's what, another reason why I'm here today. Howard was heavily criticized for that interview. Now, what is it? And here's what I'd like to know. Let's get that interview. Let's hear O.J. Simpson's own words. Why didn't Marsha Clark get it? Why didn't uh, the other guy's name, what's his name? Christopher Darden. But here it is. O.J. Simpson told Howard Weitzman, you can leave. Van Adder and the other guy kept to Howard came home. He was so upset. So the police, and he said, you can leave. And do you know why he said you could leave? Because I believe OJ, how about instead of I believe, I know OJ was starting to weave his own story about the timeline, but more important, about the cut on his hand. I know, but, but my, my but question the is, point about Howard's, how, Howard's too smart. He's too smart. He let but, him but, if, but if he, OJ told him to leave, you say no. Right. You, as the attorney, you say, he you say no. no. You he say said no. no 10 times. He told him, OJ, you don't have to do this. Oh, OJ, I, uh, but Mar this Margaret, Margaret, Christ. Margaret, I'm not criticizing. What, I'm, what I always thought was, when Howard saw that blood, when Howard saw that cut, Howard knew he was guilty. And I'm wondering, did Howard just think, okay, go in there because it ain't gonna do you any good? Because I think Howard knew from the get-go, and that's one of the reasons he left the case, that O.J. Simpson well, committed it, these it, murders. It was a snowball. It started to snowball, but that was definitely. But as we sit here today, where is that tape? Oh, no, the tape came no. out. No, the no. it was a 32-minute tape, and it came out during the trial, Margaret. I want to know where the garment bag is. Didn't you guys? I mean, you knew Robert. You knew Chris. Ask you... A.C. Callings. Maybe he knows because somebody went over there to clean up the mess. Uh, okay, the other... The garment bag, I really believe, has some clothes for his, you know, fake trip to Chicago. I'm telling you, something's up, Margaret. We got to go. We're, 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 we're at time, but... If you ever find out, if you ever if you find, find out, out or you want to talk about it, we're here. Like I said, it is, it is a tragedy, but, um, and we're forgetting about the victims, Ron Goldman and his family, and of course, O.J. Simpson's family. It's so horrible. Nobody wanted to believe it. Who wants to believe that O.J. did this? We didn't. Celebrity and cameras in the courtroom messed up this case. Yeah, right. Margaret, okay. thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, Margaret. We really appreciate thank you. you coming on. All right. Thank Thanks. you. I, I'm now. I, I'm even I'm more curious about the garment bag. I am telling you, there is something that it doesn't. It make doesn't sense make sense. That sense. Walk away with it. Why? Why would it's you walk away with at you? his home? I, I'm telling you that every spidey sense in my body tells me Robert Kardashian knew something. And again, he was very, very close to O.J. Simpson. And I think at the time, he really believed he was not guilty. Right. And I think that changed over time. But we're not going to solve it today. Uh, today. We're taking a break. All right. When we come back, 
Uh, big milestone for Travis Kelsey. Does it involve Taylor Swift? No, it doesn't. But we're going to show you what he accomplished. We're sure Taylor's very proud of it. Been a long time coming for Travis Kelsey, um, but he has finally graduated. Well, that's not true. It's not actually true. It, that's certainly, he got to experience graduation. Correct. Right, because uh, back, he went to the University of Cincinnati, uh, just like his brother Jason before him, and uh, he had graduated, uh, had enough credits, graduated, got his diploma, but never got to actually walk. Well, Which is just a thrill. It, <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> so he finally went back to the University of Cincinnati and walked. I mean, I don't know that anybody else Wait, that walks is into that, graduation is that the like way a he did. Full stadium? Yeah, it's probably the basketball arena, I'm guessing. And everybody showed up for that. Yeah. Look, they got the new Heights banner for his, their podcast hanging in, in the gymnasium, but he walked in. Uh, again, that's not your normal graduation walk. What the heck? Did they do the podcast from there? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Did they do the podcast? There were two chairs there. Yeah, Harvey and Charles, they actually did do a podcast right from the See? arena okay. there. So <laughs> this was, right, so this was all part of a promotion. But I think, you know, for the guys too, look, they did both graduate, like you said, and they were football stars though. So because of that, they always had to play or training camp and they never actually had the opportunity to walk across the stage. So they get that last night. University of Cincinnati, some schools are known for their uh, academics. Some schools are known for their partying. I think we know which one's which. <laughs> Wow! Do we have any any Bearcats in here who want to stand up? For, well, let's hope, here, here, let's here, hope here, not. Here, here, here's, a, here's a funny thing. He went to ASU and I went to UCSB. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, I, sir. I, right. I went to Seton Fine Hall, academic. which has not good, doesn't have good academics nor good partying. So, uh, so all right. So they they did their podcast there, but did they have a moment? They get handed their diplomas. I know they have them. Did they do a? Ceremonial. Yeah, they got the whole, they got the whole experience. Despite not actually being part of the 2024 class, they got their diplomas right there. The crowd, the fans went absolutely crazy. They were playing Taylor Swift. They were you know, like name that tune. That Travis was dancing like a madman. It was a, it was like a part. It was a complete party at the arena. It was oh awesome. Oh my god! Wow. Did they have like? Is their agent, I mean, they must have Hollywood agents. Are they just planning these events? I got to say, it's kind of brilliant. It, it really is brilliant. I mean, we did a story the other day that after WrestleMania, WWE is like clamoring to work with Jason Kelsey more. Everyone cannot get enough of these guys. They want a piece of the Kelsey. God, huh? that's just, un, it is un They are big business. It is unbelievable. They, they have, Babcock, a year they had at TMZ Sports. How do you get one of them on? No, on. it's not just that. <laughs> The Kelsey's, I used to be able to get Kel Travis on, not anymore. <laughs> but yeah. the, the, the Kelsey's are bigger than Tom Brady now. Right now, yeah, I think it's Ooh. undeniable. They're the hottest athletes in the world, period. That's crazy. I mean, if Tom Brady were putting himself out there like that, then... No, but I'm saying Tom Brady, you know, has got a post-football career. They're bigger than Tom Brady. This is Cassandra Carson from Springfield, Missouri. And honestly, this whole thing just uh, was a joke to me, honestly, a little bit of an eye roll. <laughs> but I have to say, and finding out that they didn't get to walk for their own graduation, I mean, I get it. There's a time and place, you know, party it up. Uh, the beer spike, it's a bit much, but you know what? Go it's for it, It's expected for them. But the, like the dean, the, like the, the the provost or the dean is standing there and they're chugging beer. But you know how that works. You know what the provost and the dean are really there for. Oh, this is right. Uh, hey guys, we put on this big show for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, how about a donation, a donation or two? That's what always comes. Uh, absolutely. Okay, we're moving on. Yes, uh, moving on to some very sad, sad news. Is it really sad? All right, I was just trying to be respectful. Oh, I, of I the didn't Golden the Bachelor. Yes, I was trying to be respectful of Jerry Turner, the Golden Bachelor. You know, of course, that uh, he and Teresa Nist, they got, um, they got married at the end of the uh, Golden Bachelor so back in January. Let, let's put it this way. They're going to have to return the wedding presents. Yeah, <laughs> they're going back uh, because they announced this morning that they are getting divorced. Now, we three, knew that, three months, guys. Three months. We knew that they were living in separate places. She lives with, near her family in New Jersey. Uh, he's in Indiana, near his family. Something smells here. But they never figured out how to move forward, and so now this was their announcement about <laughs> the end of their marriage. Kind of come to the conclusion mutually mm -hmm. 
that it's probably time for us to um, dissolve our marriage. Get a divorce. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Three months after getting married. Yes. Yes. I think we just feel like it's best for the happiness of each of us to to live apart. I can't help but notice you're still holding hands. Yes. Did you fall <laughs> out of love? No. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> no. I still love this person. Yeah, I still There's love There's no him. doubt in my mind. I still am in love with her. I root for her every day. And are yet, you are you buying this? Are you, I don't get it. They knew. Are you they buying knew this? when they got married that they lived in different places. Are you so buying this? Is something doesn't was this, this for the show? So test. phony. And as Charles mentioned, you guys, we blew the lid off of this story just a couple weeks ago when we revealed that they still weren't living together. They were living in separate states, and during that time when we got that story. Our sources were adamant that they were in love. They were still trying to figure it out, but there was really no plan as to where they were gonna move. I mean, they had ideas, but really like there was nothing that was set in stone. So it already didn't seem like this was going to go anywhere. However, about a week ago, uh, Teresa posted a video of them together because we were told as well that they had a planned uh, vacation together. So something must have happened um, during that time. Mm. However, or you know, this they obviously- was, Or this mm -hmm. was the plan from the get-go. Or right. this was the plan, I mean, which, right. by the way, Gary filed for divorce today. We're just about to post the story. Um, he filed in his hometown um, in Indiana, and he listed the date of separation as today, by by the way, like literally the day of the announcement, which feels inauthentic. Hey, it's Elisa Word in Atlanta. Listen, these shows, people get really emotional. They get caught up in the moment. They act off of emotion without the benefit of intellect. But in this one, I think he's got a little bit of intellect. This guy's going from the golden bachelor to the golden juggler. Something seems a little fishy in this story. Something so seems it'd be interesting to see how it fishy. pans out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I smell a uh, me too. reality me show set up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're taking a break. Yes, when we come back, it is open season on Drake. The Weeknd, who used to be tight with, uh, with Drake, even he has now jumped on the Drake hate train. You're gonna hear the diss track that he just dropped. Everyone going after Drake now, even former friends. I think the most positive spin for Drake on this is that you could say if you're at the top, everybody is gunning for you, right? Right, right. Uh, Because it seems lately that everybody is taking shots at Drake. Why did it change? Why song. did it turn all of a sudden? I, I, I don't know, and may, maybe it's just that it's good business, but the latest um, diss track <laughs> that is going after Drake, there are two of them actually, one from The Weeknd and one from ASAP Rocky. Both song, both verses appear on Future and Metro Boomin's new album, We Still Don't Trust You. And Drake definitely does not, tr does not trust them. Um, because here we're gonna, this is a mashup now of um, The Weeknd's verse going after Drake, and then you're also gonna hear ASAP Rocky going after Drake. And of course, this comes after Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar's Lamar. verse right. uh, taking down Drake. I, okay, here we go. Sorry, Drake. Wow. Wait, that's a that's a mention of Drake's baby mama, right? Yes, that is definitely uh, an insinuation about Sophie, and he's basically saying, not only did I get her before you got her, I also got Rihanna. So he is just like throwing shots, as you know. I kind of do know why ASAP is throwing the shots because Drake has subtly thrown shots at him and Rihanna's uh, in the past. That's true. So, but the weekend, what was the weekend? The weekend, the weekend. They him were and Drake, almost on the same label. Yes, they were almost on the same label, but they did not sign. The weekend did not sign to OVO Records. He went on to sign with Republic Records and, and create his own record label, XO Records. Don't know where this beef is coming from, but. The boys are mad at Drake. He is getting bullets and he is getting attacked from every which realm. It's it's a little crazy. So does this hurt his fan base? 
Drake's, He's gonna, yeah, I will tell Drake's you this. Base. Drake's going to have to come out with yeah, the, hottest, <laughs> the hottest bars coming does he have after to go all after, of them. Does he have to go after all of them? Yes, every single last one, one of them. Just every do one single song last one and one take them. everybody out. And he cannot pull a J. Cole. He can't put out a fire song, a fire diss, and then apologize for it. He's going to have to come out swinging so heavy because <laughs> they really came after him. And he can't really count on J. Cole to be in his corner now because J. Cole, J. Cole has backed off of Why have they gone after him all of a sudden? What happened? I this think Drake is low key. Thing, Drake man. is low key a troll. Like I said, there's been he's he's thrown little crumbs in other songs where he's he's dissing. He's using the word anti, which is you know the the uh, name of Rihanna's album. Uh, he's saying he's not pretty Flacco, which is. ASAP's, ASAP's nickname. nickname. Uh, there's just so many things that he's done subtly. Okay. ASAP hasn't I'm put an album out, out since 2018, <laughs> so here we are. You lost him in Pretty Flocka. You lost Pretty Flocka? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty Flocka. <laughs> <Pretty Flocka. laughs> <laughs> like, huh? Right. My name's Cliff. I'm from Houston, Texas, by way of Dickinson. And my opinion is basically controversy sells. So it could be all a publicity stunt. Nobody's really said each other's names. And besides the Kendrick lyric, where he was throwing subliminal lyrics about the big three, I mean, nobody really has said each other's names, so. Yeah, but it's pretty, it's, but it's pretty clear they're going to. Because after, everybody right. knows the storylines. Yeah. One, wait, one yeah. other thing to mention is, though, is that, you know, there was the, the problems with J. Cole also being dissed on the Future and right. Metro Boomin' first. He's on the second album. He's featured on a song on the second album. So they, I don't know, they must have made up and they recruited him to be on the second album, but then recruit Drake. Wait, so J. Cole apologizes for going after Kendrick Lamar and then Future and Metro Boomin put him on their album. Yep, he's on the album. I think I want to go back to O.J. Simpson. I know something about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, we're gonna... nobody, there, there are no garment bags involved in this. <laughs> that I can promise you. We're going to move on. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a break, actually. And oh. when we come back, Caitlyn Jenner got a lot of heat for her reaction to O.J. Simpson's death, and a lot of people were actually comparing her to O.J. Well, she's got a few words for them when we come back. Welcome back to TMZ Live. Good riddance. That is what Caitlyn Jenner said when she got the news that O.J. Simpson had died. Um, it was short, pretty sweet, stark, short, short sweet, sweet, to the point. And I felt completely understandable. Yep. I well, mean, you got to understand, too. She was extremely close to OJ and Nicole. Right. Along um, with Chris. They vacationed together. They um, were together when they uh, Nicole made the last ditch effort to save the marriage in, in Mexico. Right. That's them. So, um, that seemed like a logical thing for Caitlyn to say. A lot of people took issue with that uh, and actually started going after Caitlyn online after she posted that on X. Um, the reactions she got were people comparing her to OJ. That's ridiculous. Because of uh, this accident in Malibu. On Pacific Coast Highway right? where she hit a car, somebody died because she the car went across. She hit the Lexus went into the, the, other, the lane other lane and, got, and hit another car. And it was a fatality. And to compare an accident to a, an intentional slaughter Slaying. of human beings is ridiculous. Right. And whoever is saying that, I mean, Well, God. the internet's filled with trolls. I know, and, it's But ridiculous. Caitlin took the time to respond to those trolls today. She said, I know you all think it's cute to compare a fatal car accident with multiple vehicles involved to a brutal murder. But remember, OJ said something to the effect of, I could kill her and get away with it because I'm O.J. Simpson. Yeah. It, it, it's ridiculous. It's a pretty sad commentary on the state of the internet when Caitlyn Jenner feels compelled to even respond to something as trollish as comparing an accident on the PCH to the murders of, of Ron and Nicole. It's, it's, it's absolutely outrageous. It's yeah. just... And, and, oh, and this... Compa the comparison is ridiculous as it is. But also remember, Caitlyn wasn't even charged with... Right, she was in charge with the crime. manslaughter well, or anything. She, uh, she, it was, you know, she apparently was took her eyes off the road. They said that she did break late, but... She, right, yeah. but my God, to say that, I, I just wonder why Caitlin felt the need why even she to even respond. Responded. But it, it's just an absurd thing to try to compare the two. My name is Brianna, and I'm from Ventura County. I don't think that it's fair to compare the brutal murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman to a car accident. Now, Jenner did settle for $800,000 when a suit was brought against her regarding the incident. But at the end of the day, even if this was a case of manslaughter or criminal negligence, that's still not comparable to first-degree murder. And what you got to realize, too, and again, I just want to underscore this, that, you know, 
we can comment about this. I didn't know Nicole, you didn't know Nicole. Right. He was really close to both of them and close to Nicole. And Chris was, um, was uh, one of Nicole's best friends. Right. So you know, it's, it's funny because I have a problem with pronouns to explain you, that. Right. So I'm just being honest about that. So, um, but I, I will say it just when somebody is that close to somebody who is almost decapitated, of you course, can understand to say good Of course, Caitlin's going to have that kind yeah. of reaction. Okay, we're going to move on. Yes, uh, to a really scary incident for a former So You Think You Can Dance star um, who is in the UK. Uh, Cora Obidi was in the UK when she says she was attacked by someone uh, wielding a knife and acid uh, that was thrown on her, uh, landing on her face. Uh, this was her reaction just seconds after she says this attack attack went down. This is burning. Yeah. <sighs> please, can I have some clothes to wash it, please? Um, I have to wash um, my face. Two. It's not going to um, give my neutralized acid. Please, can I have some blood here? I mean, obviously, yeah. super, super scary video. And I mean, what the hell is going on? I mean, you see all these people in New York. I think it was Bethany Frankel got punched. Got and punched. just all these random attacks. And it's obviously really scary. Uh, she goes on to say that, you know, there's a police investigation underway. She was attacked allegedly by a five-foot uh, woman uh, in the UK. And I, I think the, her, her reason for putting this video out was hoping that, you know, there might have been a bystander there or maybe someone who might have saw something that but could it, hopefully... Where, where did this, this happen, was, Devin? This was in, was in, in, in London? London. No, but where? Was this the train station? I, it looks no, like it from the video. I, I don't know the specific, well, maybe it is. Yeah, the specific it area. They, they would have, I mean, especially gonna London, there are going to be surveillance cameras all over the place. Right. So yeah, they, you you would think so. And, and she's since posted a video. I haven't really seen this, but apparently there's a lot of people that are thinking she might have done the video to, like, get clout or mm -hmm. to get attention or something, and are maybe thinking that this video is fake or something. And she's essentially sh saying, I'm not doing this for clout. I am lucky that I'm alive and only got a few scratches. She showed a stab wound on her leg, but basically just said she's lucky and just wants whoever this person was um, to be you know, found uh, and prosecuted. There are, there are cameras all oh, over London, yeah. everywhere in London. So, uh, you know, whatever happened, they're going to be able to see this and on video. And it does video. seem, you can see when the medics are treating her that there's, her face definitely seems scarred. Yeah. So something, something happened. went on her face That's right. and they are she, treating she her. She thinks it was acid. She showed it today and was lucky. There's just a small little scratch on like her nose, but she's really lucky. Wow. Hi, this is Gina from San Francisco. And the thing that strikes me um, as something that's so frightening is before it was random attacks in New York, but mind you, this is um, attacks on and assaults on women. And so now it's reached London. And um, it, with Bethany Frankel being, you know, a celebrity, and then there was an influencer in New York. And now you see Cora, she's from So You Think You Can Dance. And now we've reached a level, um, leveling up to acid. And that's just scary and gross. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that stuff in New York, and by the way, not only happening to celebrities. There's yeah, I mean, with the, the, we know of, you know, we, when you hear a celebrity, the, the, you know, but yeah. there are other people too. Okay, taking a break. All right, when we come back, Jessica Alba makes a big decision about the Honest Company. Honestly, she is out as the chief creative officer. And what is this going to do to the company? There's a Honest is a very, very successful company. Will this hurt it? We're going to follow the money with our buddy Damon John when we come back. Jessica Alba is following in the footsteps of uh, Kylie Jenner, of uh, George Clooney. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey, which you may say, oh, that sounds like those are good footsteps to follow in. Um, but what she's doing is stepping down, <laughs> uh, that she is no longer going to be the creative officer, chief creative officer of Honest Brand, of the Honest Company. Her, uh, it's a baby and personal care uh, company, and she's still going to be on the board of directors, but she is basically removing herself as the face of this company. So what happens to brands when their big celebrity face uh, or leader, in this case, steps down? Um, 
Does it hurt the company? Or do their investors get worried? Uh, we're going to follow the money uh, with our buddy Damon John, as we do every week. And he is joining us now. Damon, welcome back. Uh, what say you about the Honest Company without Jessica at the helm? Hey guys, thanks you for having me. So, um, you know, this is a tricky one. You know, uh, when when Oprah left Weight Watchers, it was a challenge because number one, Oprah really was a brand. She had always had her challenges with weight, and she she jumped aboard when uh, she felt there was an opportunity. She was a spokesperson, and but she didn't found the company. And then, due to all the shots everybody had been taking, the you know, the, there were better products out there, and she left. Um, that took a dive. But, you know, Jessica's still staying on, um, so they're going to be able to use probably her images and her likeness forever. And I think Honest Company is becoming so big that uh, a lot of people will assume or associate Jessica with it, but because they still have her imagery and she's still on the board, I think it's going to uh, do okay. So, again, this is a, a very tricky one. If me and my Google guys left Google, there's a problem. Uh, but, you know, in this one, I think it's going to still go do well. You know, I was thinking about it, and um, you kind of look at George Clooney and Randy Gerber. They made a gazillion dollars <laughs> selling Casamigos, and they're still kind of tangentially involved. But people, you know, they did it long enough that, that, that if they go away, that, if they go away, it. you still say, "Oh yeah, it's that it's, it's the George, one George Clooney." Clooney did. So you know, in a way, if you can ride it out long enough, the celebrity can cash in, and then the company can still do okay. You're 100% correct, and you're talking about, though, this, think about what else you're talking about. If you like Honest Company because of the, what it does to your body and your baby, whatever the case is, you don't care anymore. The product is the product, and it serves its purpose. If you like Clooney and, uh, and, and, and his product, it's a habit. You know, we, we, we have our liquors we call for. Uh, double Tito's and Tonic, uh, Jack and Coke. You're not going to, because Clooney level, all of a sudden your taste buds are going to change. So that's why I believe that if the product is still great and the Honest Company makes a great product, I think it will uh, it'll last. So this is the model that, uh, that all celebrities want to follow, and this is why they attach themselves very early on as the face of something, right? They're, they're always planning, like, we were talking about George Clooney. I, I'm waiting for, I don't know, within the next year or two when The Rock decides he's going to, sell Terramana to someone, right? I mean, well, you know what I think build of, it. I think at the core of this, Charles, is this. Those celebrities like Clooney and Alba, they created it because of a passion, or Kylie, they created it because of a passion or something they truly believed in, and that DNA still stays in the brand. The celebrities who pop in and stamp their name on something, it gets this kind of pump, and as soon as they leave, it gets a dump because it, it didn't have... The history, the dedication, the DNA, because the consumer is smarter than anybody. They go, okay, wait a minute, I liked it at first. Oh, this is crap. And I think that's what really happens. It's about it's about the uh, the easiest thing to sell is the truth, and people smell the crap. Uh, so when people leave that or there for the wrong reasons or or just for a check, they they know. I see a distinction though, that. With George Clooney and Randy Gerber, nobody thinks that they're standing there in some assembly line, you know, making tequila or whatever. Jessica but, Alba. But, but it, not even Jessica Alba so much, because I think it's the same kind of thing. A, a little, she's more involved. But I'm thinking, like, if Gwyneth Paltrow sold Goop, she is so associated with creating that stuff that I wonder if it would be much more problematic when the celebrity, or Martha Stewart, when they're so, like, embedded in that and brand. curating the stuff. That's I, right. No, nobody thinks it, Exactly. When nobody, making it, but yes. But, but, but she's picking they're out They're so things, involved right. that when they leave, or if they leave, I think it's more problematic. Yeah, listen, I think there could be a challenge with it, but also sometimes celebrities are the bigger problem, too, because they're holding on to it so tight that they're not allowing it to grow and, and, and gain its natural um, trajectory of going to a lot of other people. And I think, though, that um, if a celebrity like Gwen is left, believe it or not, we'll talk about it for a week. The brand will still be out there for years on shelves. And some, you know how many people have no idea? Actually, you did a report when the guy... Uh, who was a part a KKK guy bought Fubu out of some other place and he had no idea. Some of these brands get so big that you have no idea about yeah, that little true. blip about the person yeah. leaving. You know, so uh, I, I think it's going to be okay. But I think we're going back to the basics of it. People people support the things that are really made out of the heart and passion of celebrities, and they, and then it'll grow to be something bigger. If they're just taking a check. 
the people are going to bounce as soon as the celebrity bounces. So Kylie yeah. didn't have to use that hard hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, before we go, I'm just wondering, could I get something like, what would you recommend in a, like a Pinot Noir? Do you have something there? Uh, I was wondering that too. What he's doing? What? 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 what, what you got you something, know, I'm, got I'm something actually, good? I'm actually, I'm actually in my buddy. I, no, I, I had to do my TMZ for all the money for our faithful people. I'm in my buddy the gathering spot in Atlanta. I just said, can I get a room? I gotta get a room. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, they must have great wines. I don't drink wine, uh, but they must have great wines because everybody's mad. Then just grab one for me. That's I'm in this room. <laughs> it's a nice background. It looks good. It we'll good see, to see you see next you, week, man. Damon. All right, guys, peace. Way better than my background yesterday. <laughs> yeah, your, back, your background, the foreground, all of it needed help. Uh, what is that supposed to mean? Uh, yeah, you know, it means exactly what I said. Wow. All right, we are going to take a break. Wow. Uh, when we come back, Jewel speaking out about oh her relationship with Kevin Costner. It's going to be okay, man. You survived it. So we broke a story uh, last year, I believe it was late last year, yeah. about Kevin Costner uh, moving on from his divorce. Remember, we got pictures of him and, and Jewel, Jewel. Yeah. Uh, on Richard Branson's island. Exactly. All snuggly and whatnot. It was late last year, it was December. Hmm. Yeah, memory works every now and then. <laughs> uh, but... Prevagen. Um, <laughs> Prevagen? <laughs> anyway, uh, this is funny coming from you. Uh, but yes, Elle, Elle magazine actually talked to Jewel, and for the first time, she is talking about their relationship. Um, and she uh, acknowledges, she says that Kevin is a great person. The public fascination is intense, for sure. So, I guess when they do things together, she's not she's saying realizing. we're dating, but they no, are no, no, no. clearly. She, is, they... she is acknowledging they're dating. If you read the whole article, she is acknowledging they're dating. Uh, what she's saying is that she just didn't realize, which is weird, that she didn't realize that people would be that curious about it. Well, it was in the throes of this divorce, right, too. Right. right, I mean... And and I will say that that is the most, in like, in crazy, intriguing part about this whole thing was the whole divorce between Kevin and Christine Bumgarner. Like, that was the one, the pinnacle divorce. We were covering it from top to bottom, sideways, every which way. It was one of the most interesting divorces that happened. And so all of this publicity that Kevin Costner was getting is why the first girl that he dated after Christine was Jewel. And that's why all of this, you know, public attention is on the couple. And I don't think that she's used to that because she really has not been in the spotlight she is kind as of a, a singer. Celebrity, yeah. Very, very private. And Kevin Costner kind of was too. But then, you know, when these photos came out, it was just set the internet ablaze because they really are like a cute couple together. Yeah. No, they really are. You can't be the first after a really bombastic divorce. What do you mean? If you're the first person after you're the person you're hooking up with, if they've had a big divorce, a big divorce everyone's talking about, then you're gonna you're stepping into that. You right. gotta you but gotta you let there be, be a buffer person. It, it can still work. No, I'm not it can work, but if you don't want the spotlight, you gotta let there be a buffer person. It was Kevin Costner. And then you <laughs> Okay. Uh, it is that time of the week, folks. Yes, your favorite time. Tim is here with his rejects. And wow, Tim. Wow. Woo. You lose it. Tim, you gotta, wow. you're, you're like Drake. You're losing <laughs> oh, your crown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, do you guys do any ab exercises? Yes. Okay, Charles? Sure, yes. Sure, okay. Well, I think I, I have one for you guys. So okay. uh, this guy's getting a little stomach workout here. He's uh, laying on the ground, and uh, there that's are That's not a workout, Tim. Oh, no, that's well. called death. <laughs> you, you have to, you know, flex your muscles so you don't, you know, get crushed there. And, what uh, the heck? Uh, so, Let me yeah, guess, I, is this I, a Guinness World Record? Yes, 376 motorcycles these... <laughs> went over this man's stomach. But, but, but what, what was the what previous was the record? Place? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> who did this before? Those are heavy bikes too, man. Yeah, so I, I don't know if uh, the bikes have to be like careful the, or like, I don't okay. know how he like, I, I don't know. This is ridiculous. Yeah, but maybe an exercise <laughs> Well, here's the thing, Tim. Yeah. Now he can eat ice cream. Well, <laughs> yeah, he can have a little dessert. Okay, next. All right, so Charles, you're a big snowmobiler, right? Uh, all the time. Right, and uh, the, the last story was uh, motorcycles, so uh -huh. how about a Harley Davidson motorcycle snowmobile? But if you look, it only has one blade in the front, so it's pretty cool, it looks cool, but it looks a kind of little, little Does sketchy it have a there. Is that tough. a tire? No, it's a, it's a belt. It's, it's, it's a, a belt, it's but like I mean, uh, belt. it's pretty uh, cool, uh, you know. That is kind of cool, but you do have to balance it. That actually yeah. would be, actually, 
looks. Oh yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. I gotta get. I gotta find somebody else to. That looks like a lot of fun. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah, it doesn't look like fun. Let me tell you. Ooh. I'll send you flowers. I got an idea. Uh, okay, <laughs> last one. All right. Speaking of fun, uh, a lot of families go to the park, get some fresh air, have fun, do a lot of activities, especially like going? baseball. Nowhere good. <laughs> uh, this family here is out for a nice uh -oh, day. Oh, baseball! Uh, Someone's about doing a little, doing right a little the, baseball oh, here. Oh, I know where this ball's yeah, going. So, uh, look out, Dad! Uh, look uh, out! Uh -oh. Oh. oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what? That's so funny. Yes. Yeah, so See, funny. I, I thought Dad was getting it in the jewels, yeah, but and then nope. of, uh, Mom oh. got it right in the crown. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! She's okay. Ouch. So. There wow. But, um, yeah. Why is that funny every time? It always time. is. Yeah. It always oh, God. Is. Tim, All right, Tim. I, I hate to say goodbye because I wonder if I know. people look, it's very. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, wow. What happened? Oh, Tim. No, he doesn't want your late applause. What happened? Get out of here. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. We are taking a break. All right, when we come back, Cardi B doing something that I think is unique for um, New York celebrities. At her age, she is now finally learning how to drive. I know, what took so long? It's a New York thing. You don't get it, Harvey. Cardi B could have been driving for the last 15 years. Uh, she is 31 years old, but she does not have a driver's license, which is weird, because we've seen how many cars she and Offset have. Oh, that's have. right. <laughs> She's just posing in front of them. Well, you get chauffeured. Right, well, she is now learning how to drive. Uh, this happens a lot for people in New York, because if you grow up in New York City, you don't drive, you use mass transit. So weird to me. Um, but uh, here she is behind the wheel. Let's see how this goes. OK, 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 slow down, slow down. Wait, 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 I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. It's, it's like a lot going on. OK, so let's go to the right. Let's left, go. right, left, right. Right. Let's go to the right, yeah. Oh, God, okay, I'm nervous. What's the, OK, what's the <laughs> blinker? <laughs> the blinker is going to be on the left okay, side. OK, I went. OK, hold on, I'm scared. OK. All right, let's just go straight, and we can turn around in this driveway. It's raining too much. I think okay. I think I should I think I should just give you the. Okay, no. Okay. All right. We're gonna go She's up here, and I think it's a cul-de-sac. We can turn around. A what? A cul-de-sac. A, cul like a, a what? Okay. <laughs> we, we can make a big U-turn. Okay. Uh, I can't see nothing. I need my glasses. Okay. 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 Oh God! Oh my God! Oh my God! It's raining. Ah, She's like, I need my no glasses. glasses. It's nighttime. What kind of intense driving class is this? Oh my God! I got to tell you a quick story. Um, you know, Aaron Spelling had a producing partner, Doug yes. Kramer, when they were doing Dynasty, and they had highfalutin lives. He went to check out a Mercedes, and the guy said, "Before you buy it, don't you want to test drive it?" And he got in the back seat. He got in the back seat. I think I told you this. Yes, one. You we'll have. see you tomorrow. We'll see. You. Have a good weekend. <laughs> see you on Monday. <laughs>